Hello, everyone. My name is William Mucker. I'm a client executive with Camaplan, and I would like to thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, Tax Liens, an Easy, Safe, Government Guaranteed Investment. Guess again, with Charles Sells of Strategic Passive Investments. As a quick note, please be aware that Charles will be answering questions at the end of the presentation. However, feel free to use the chat and or Q&A function on your screen to pose your questions whenever they cross your mind. They will be saved and addressed once the presentation portion ends and the Q&A portion begins. Before we get started, we do have a brief disclosure to go through. Everything presented in, in today's webinar is strictly for educational purposes. Camaplan is a neutral third-party administrator of IRAs. We are not attorneys, CPAs, or financial advisors. If it comes to a time where you need advice in any one of those fields, we highly recommend you consult with your team of professionals. We are more than happy to be a part of the dialogue with your team of professionals to make sure the investment pro investment process is quick and seamless. We do not sell any investments at Camoplan, nor do we endorse any products. We will never call you about the next best investment opportunity. We believe that you, that you should always do your own due diligence before investing your money, whether it be your retirement funds or otherwise. Once you have found the investment that is right for you, we will help you open your account, fund that account, and facilitate the transaction into that investment. Here is my contact information. If you or anyone that you know who you believe can benefit from the information have any questions about what is discussed in the presentation today and how it applies to self-direction, please do not hesitate to contact me. I would be more than happy to help. And without further ado, I'll pass the controls over to you, Charles. Awesome. Thank you, sir. All right. So topic today is actually pretty interesting, pretty fun. Uh, I obviously got by start investing in tax liens about 25 years ago. It was a completely different game then. And that's why I think it's important to uh, share this information with everybody. Uh, so you don't find yourself investing in, you know, extremely expensive um, weekend workshops. Uh, there's a lot of platforms out there now uh, on social media uh, trying to sell you information. Uh, there's a lot of poor information out there. Uh, so we're really just going to kind of uh, pick apart a few different um, states and how their how their processes work. Before we get to that, uh, how many of you, I'm sure, have traditional 401k plans, uh, which is why you're here today looking for alternative assets to get yourself invested into. Um, so where's your 401k today if you have it in a traditional IRA? Uh, well, it has plunged 23% year over year for the last three years. That's a 69% average loss in just three years. That is absolutely mind-blowing. So where are we at in 2023? Well, we're not hemorrhaging anymore, uh, but the comeback is pretty slow. We're at 4% as of as of last week, two weeks ago, I'm sorry. Uh, those those four, traditional, traditional 401ks have, have crawled back. So how much does the average 401k, 401k traditional 401k make per year? Well, if you go online and ask that question in Google, you're going to get anywhere from 3% to 8% as your average uh, returns. Um, so I'm using 68, so I'm, I'm more on the high side. Using those numbers uh, and averaging that out, that means it would take you 10 and a half years to get back what you just lost in the last three years. Uh, so obviously, self-directed IRAs um, are a, an amazing tool uh, to invest in alternative assets. Those assets include real estate, what we're talking about here today, private funds and offerings. That's essentially, you know, uh, you know, you can get into those kind of funds, small businesses and startups. Maybe you wanted to open, you know, a restaurant and this, and you just didn't have the capital to do it, but you do in your in your uh, SDIRA. Uh, you can do that with it. Bitcoin and crypto, which I still think is pretty interesting that you can do Bitcoin and crypto uh, with some of the. Um, uh, assets you can invest in, in, in with an SDRA, like art, for example. Uh, promissory notes and lending, you know, we we offer that as well. You know, you can lend to us, uh, you can lend to our investors and vice versa. Uh, stocks and mutual funds, you know, if you still want to do that, but you want to be in control of it, uh, you can certainly do that. I don't know if Camaplan offers it, uh, but you can also have a checkbook IRA, which essentially literally puts you completely in the driver's seat of, of, the, of the investment. So who are we? So we are a turnkey um, passive service provider uh, in real estate. In the last uh, 24 months, we've done about $30 million in transactions in our niche market. Over the last five years, about 90 million in that niche market. 
Uh, I have been doing this, helping investors, you know, for nearly 30 years. Like I said, I got my start in tax liens and there's a long backstory to how I got into this, uh, obviously, uh, but essentially I've been doing it since I was 23 years old. We're interested to recognize for our transparency and tenacity. So why is that important? Because other people that are in this industry, you know, if they're putting you on a stage to be a moderator or a speaker or they're allowing you to uh, advertise in magazines and do feature articles and provide articles in those magazines. They want to make sure that they're working with somebody who is got that tenacity and that transparency. Um, and again, I sit on a number of different uh, boards. Uh, in the past, I was on a tax lien hedge fund board. It was about $150 million board. Uh, and I was essentially just the more or less a third party auditor. Uh, and I'm now on the board of an oil and well flipping company. Uh, and, uh, you know, that one actually is doing very, very well. I got some some numbers on that from one of our clients that was on a broadcast last night we did. Uh, but that's that's for another topic. So what, what investments do we offer? I mentioned private lending, fix and flips and buy and holds. We're here to talk about why tax liens are not a good investment. But there is one state we still invest in. Uh, so we'll get into the details of that one as well. We're in short-term vacation rentals. Why are we in yacht charters? That seems just completely, you know, oddball. It's a it's a, short, it's a short-term va vacation rental essentially. All the moving parts are the exact same. Only difference is, as a yacht charter floats, and a condo doesn't. And like I said, we're in the oil and gas flipping business, uh, but that is a very detailed presentation for another time. So we have three very different sale formats. Um, and I'm gonna try and slow things down a little bit as we get into these, because it is it can get a little confusing uh, just in the terminology that I use. So by all means, again, drop those questions in the Q&A uh, as, as I say things that you know trigger you and we'll, we'll address it at the end. So we're gonna talk about tax sales in Florida, Georgia, and Illinois. So basically, what are tax liens? It's a reliable and predictable source of revenue for local government. What's local government? That's your county level government. So we're talking about the revenues that support firefighters, pay the teachers, uh, anything that, that is handled on the county level. Uh, that's what those revenues are for. When there's a shortfall on that budget, it's coming out of your property taxes. So the county will notify you a lot. And then at some point, they're going to sell those taxes to investors like us and that's going to create a lien, and that lien is going to be a first position lien on your property. Now, again, every state's different. We're going to go into the details of three. Uh, delinquent property owner has a set time, and it's determined by, I used to say state law, but some states like Maryland, um, Ohio, they have they have a break, Indiana, they have a breakdown of certain counties actually have different laws that, that, uh, that they uh, adhere to. Uh, but Nonetheless, determined by local local law to repay the debt uh, plus all interest and penalties, or they fit forfeit their rights to the property. Now, the platforms tell you that it's really a simple process, and it's absolutely anything but. And we're going to get into those details. So essentially, here's the, pro the logistics of how it works. It's advertised for sale, and then there's a public auction. You've got that redemption and, and maturation period I talked about. Uh, you will have that in every single state. Uh, you have foreclosure and quiet title action. Uh, and I, I forgot to put the taxes become delinquent first. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. Don't believe the hype. So these are quotes I literally ta have taken from uh, those that are selling expensive how-to programs, those that are offering to do the work on your behalf. Um, you know, and these are, these are literally... Uh, quotes that they have on their website, um, you know, and, you know, if you just Google, you know, taxing workshop, you'll find these exact same quotes turn $20,000 into you know, $20 million in one year. Uh, no, uh, it's not happening. Uh, you will receive a free and clear tax deed. Now that's an interesting statement because tax deeds are not free and clear. Uh, They're encumbered uh, and you have to go through what's called a quiet title action to make it free and clear. Uh, so that is just a, a statement that is absolutely, completely false. Easy and passive, also completely false. So here's what they want you to believe is how you invest in tax liens. Uh, you buy a tax lien, process redemption, and pay the subs, um, pre-foreclosure. You know, then you have got the, the REO, which is the property. You've done the foreclosure. 
Now you're going to do the quiet title action and boom, you're going to list it with an agent and sell it. Absolutely the false reality. Uh, the other side of the coin here is what, what it actually is. So many moving parts are going on uh, during the, the, once you purchase that tax lien, so much is happening behind the scenes that you don't even know. Uh, so by the time you get to the actual foreclosure stage, you have to make a lot of different decisions and choices as to what you're going to do. Uh, so it's it's not the simple passive investment that it's made out to, 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 to sell you on. So let's talk about Florida. Florida is, is probably the most convoluted state out there because they actually hold two auctions. So this is taken straight from a website. Essentially what they do is, is in June, in the sp uh, late spring, early summer, uh, they sell the tax lien auctions at, at the sale. Now, back in the day, Florida was an awesome st state to invest in because the interest rates are at 18%. And what you do is you're bidding down on that 18% to the lowest number that you're willing to accept. So for example, if I buy, am I, I'm buying a lien for $1,000 and it started at 18% and I bid that down to let's say 15%, uh, you know, and I was the winning bidder on that. Uh, that's that's great. So what that essentially means is um, in the state of Florida, you get what's called a 5% penalty. So that 15% or that 10% that I bid down to, that becomes prorated throughout the year for two years. But Florida has, has a, a, a thing in place where if you buy the taxes and you at least pay one quarter of 1%, then if it's redeemed, you get a 5% penalty. So what's that mean? So it's 5% plus the prorated interest. So let's say I bought that lien for $1,000 on Friday and it redeemed on that Monday. So they owe me 5% penalty plus that prorated rate that I paid. So the, the game in Florida is essentially to get the liens to redeem very quickly and hope you get 5%. Uh, and the hedge funds are the big players in this, and we'll show you some stats on that as well. Uh, this slide's completely out of place, uh, but this is you know something I took off of social media this morning, uh, and you know it just it goes to show you how you know people are going out there and they're spending gobs and gobs and gobs of money on investments that they have no clue what they're doing uh, or. You know what the next stage is or what the next uh, process is. And everybody, is, every state's different. All of this you should know before you even went to the auction uh, and bought the tax lien or the tax deed. Uh, I mean, this is just, just, just ridiculous. And we see it come across every day. So I mentioned there's a tax lien sale. And I pretty much have already given you how the process works. Uh, and, you know, this is just, again, stripped from the website. And as I said, for all certificates, except those bid at 0%, uh, they get that 5% penalty. So that's the name of the game. Uh, as long as you don't bid 0%, you can bid one quarter of 1%, you'll still get that 5% penalty. You know, but so, I mean, Florida sounds great if you can get that 5%, but uh, Florida represents 30% of all tax liens sold nationally and 90% of all institutional tax buyer acquisitions. So why are they down there for that 5% penalty? They are hedging their bet that they're gonna be able to get those rede liens redeemed quickly and that they're going to be able to earn that 5% uh, at, and they're probably borrowing their money at you know, 3%, so the fund is actually making 2%. So which means you better be ready to accept 1% as your maximum bid. You have a one in 50 chance of winning the bid at a live auction, and you have a one in 25,000 chance of winning the bid at an online auction. So what happened here? Florida used to be so good. Well, because Florida went online uh, and, you know, it, technology and social platforms is kind of what's ruined the, the, the opportunity. Uh, you know, in, in Florida, for example, when they went online, you literally had sales that went from a room full of 50 people bidding rather reasonably uh, with pretty good returns to in some in some cases 
uh, you have 50,000 registrants uh, all putting in their bids in a spreadsheet at one quarter of 1%, and the computer is just randomly picking who gets what. Um, so this is this is what it looks like in real life now. 2389. So you get the idea. Uh, it's not 18, 17, 16, 15. It's one, it's one, it's one, it's one. And this is a live auction. Uh, you know, so it's even worse than an online auction. Uh, so that is that is how Florida's tax lien process works. Now, to add some layers of confusion and difficulty to the process, uh, Florida also conducts a tax deed sale. Now, this has a little bit more opportunity to it. But again, because of a lot of the novices out there that don't know what they're doing, it's doing what we call a busted sale. Uh, they're in there. They're spending too much. They're bidding the properties up to retail value. You know what you could buy them off of a real estate agent for, and they're clouded with all these these issues uh, that you have to take care of. So essentially, how that process works is, you know, now you've got the five percent. You've been earning, you know, let's call it one percent uh, per year. So you've got a whopping seven percent going into the tax deed sale. Uh, now you have to come up with all the back taxes. So consider at least two years of back taxes, plus what we call the, the tax deed application fees. So the TDAs are, um, you know, they vary from county to county, but it, essentially it's going to be like, it, it's all the back taxes, plus all the fines and penalties they've put on top of it, plus 300 bucks per lien. They're going to now take that and you're going to earn 18% per annum, again, prorated, for roughly about six months until they take it to the tax deed auction, where then you have to, if you want the property, show up, bid against yourself essentially, uh, and take uh, take the, the title to the property. Otherwise, somebody else buys your property and you get the 18% per annum prorated on the tax deed application fees. So don't confuse that with the tax lien fees of the 7% you earned. You're getting it on the tax deed application fees. So that means, as I just said, a tax buyer wanting property has to pay back all the additional back taxes and fees and go bid against others on their own tax lien deeded property or 3.5% per year plus 18% annualized for six months it takes to do the tax deed application. Uh, so is Florida a good place to invest? Not anymore. All right, moving on to Illinois. Now, um, Illinois is pretty much where I got my career started. Uh, and it used to be a great state because the penalties were high. Um, the bidding was very conservative. Uh, it was competitive, but uh, conservative. Uh, and, you know, there was essentially probably eight or nine of us that that were serious buyers throughout the state. The Illinois situation is a little bit different. It's not necessarily the social that has messed it up. It's not necessarily the workshops that are messed it up or the online auctions that have messed it up. It's the policies and the legal changes that Illinois made uh, that messed it up. Um, so in the state of Illinois, you can earn as much as 36% uh, per year and Illinois redemption period is two to two and a half years, but we have the right to extend that to three, which we always did because Illinois is what we call a redemption state. We weren't there for property. We were there to, to get those high, high interest liens and those high payments. So the way it used to be before and the way it is now is max bids were 18%, which then essentially doubled every six months. So if you bought it at 18%, it was 36% after six months. And in Illinois, it wasn't prorated. So if I bought a tax lien on a Friday for $1,000 for 18% and it redeemed on a Monday, I got $180 on that $1,000 investment. Well, they've changed a lot of laws, but for sake of time, I'm not going to get into all of them. The biggest one that they changed is now the maximum bid rates are 9%. So what you can actually earn per year has been cut in half. Uh, and that absolutely killed 
the sales. Um, you know, Illinois was already having a bad enough time with their population attrition uh, because they're you know, one of the worst states to live in, but also have one of the highest tax rates uh, in the country as well. So uh, that that obviously caused a big problem for them. So it used to be a great state uh, because they also had all their auctions uh, were, were required to be live. Uh, so that was fantastic as well. So before I go on into the legalese of how this process works, let's watch these bidders for about 30 seconds. All right, that's enough. So you heard all those bidders bidding zero. Uh, the guy that was to the left of me in the in the plaid shirt, uh, he um, he actually had never been to a tax sale before, had no clue how the laws worked, uh, and he thought when he was bidding zero, that meant he didn't have to pay anything for the lien. He didn't realize he was pay bidding zero for the interest he was going to receive. So when we look at how Illinois works now, and I'll get to why these guys are bidding zero in just a second. It's similar to what Florida is. Um, now, when you look on the left here and we look at the number of liens that were offered for sale and the value of those liens, what they were. Uh, but if you come over to the weighted average, you hear them all screaming zero. So how can the weighted average be 2.74? 0.8 in Cass County, 1.2 in Champaign County. Well, it has to do with the weighted average as we jump over to this data on the right. Now on the right, you can see that there are bids at 9%. Now that's the max bid, remember. These are essentially trash liens that nobody wants. That's why you see trustee St. Clair County all over them. Uh, that means they're going back to the trustee who's in charge then of keeping the liens, uh, collecting any redemptions that come through. They get the same penalties uh, as if it was sold at the sale. Uh, and then they end up foreclosing and selling those properties off at a, a share of sale uh, at a later date, about four years from now. Um, so this is what changes the, the weighted average uh, on these numbers on, on the left there, uh, is all the things that are basically struck off to the county, all the trash, trash liens. So essentially what happens here? Um, uh, oh, I didn't put a slide in here. All right, so I'm just gonna explain to you um, what, what why they're bidding like that. The reason they're bidding like that is because in Illinois, there's a pro, uh, provision where if you're the successful tax buyer in year one and those liens don't redeem by the time year two comes around, you have the right to uh, purchase those tax liens prior to the auction for the sub-tax penalty, which is 12%. So essentially, they're hedging their bets on getting the next year's sub-taxes. So imagine how many of these liens are going to redeem at 0% where they're going to get absolutely nothing. They have to do all kinds of uh, pre-sale paperwork uh, and, and all sorts of other things in order to... to they got to pay for take notices, which are probably about thirty-five dollars to in today, uh, with postal rates these these days. Um, you know they have to file those in triplicate. There's a lot of costs that go into it, and a lot of legal work that goes into it, and to have it redeemed at zero and hope that you're going to get the second year. Well, great, you get the second year. Now, what's your what's your annualized over two years? If you're buying it at twelve percent, six percent a year. Uh, so they're actually in there just hedging that they're going to get 6% a year on what didn't redeem. Very risky business. As I sa said, when you go to a tax sale in Illinois, first you have to pay $200 to $500 just for the sale list. As I mentioned, the, the take notices, uh, about $26 each uh, right now. Foreclosure fees, $3,000 to $20,000 to foreclose on each lien. Why so much? Now, now, one of the legislative laws that they passed was that uh, you you used to be able to collect the foreclosure fees, the legal fees, um, 
when when it redeems. No longer can, can you do that. So if you get into the foreclosure process and it redeems, you essentially lose all your profit on that redemption because you've spent it on legal fees. Why does it get up to twenty thousand dollars? Because they may hit you with back taxes while it's while you purchased it as a lien. Now they do have some good provisions in that respect that you can file for sale and error and at least get your principal back. But still, just a lot of risk, a lot of risk. All right, let's talk about a good one, Georgia. Uh, like I said, we're still in Georgia. We call them hybrid liens. Why do we call them hybrid liens? Because you go to the sale, you bid just like you would on anything else, and what they give you is this tax deed. Uh, it's not a deed. It's a lien. Uh, you're not allowed to touch the property. You can't insure. You can't do anything with it for at least a year. You have to foreclose the right of redemption. So that's why we call it a hybrid because they're giving you a deed, but it acts like a certificate. Um, so, you know, again, novice investors seem to not understand the laws affecting their investments and they get into a lot of trouble because they have this deed in hand and they go knock on the door uh, and, you know, stuff happens. So Georgia is actually pretty cool. And as long as they don't go online, it'll remain pretty cool. Uh, in Georgia, the redemption is one year. All the auctions are still held, held live at the courthouse. So essentially, they have one year to redeem, and then you can begin the foreclosing the right of redemption. So if we put that into, into you know, a, an example of today, and Georgia tax sales, I should go ahead and mention it, the first Tuesday of every month. So we have a good one coming up next Tuesday. Um, uh, which which obviously we'll be attending uh, on behalf of some of our investors. So we have a property value of $100,000 and the minimum bid is $5,000. That property then sold for $60,000. So unlike the other two I just showed you, now we're talking about bidding down on, or I'm sorry, bidding up on the taxes we're willing to pay, which we call an overbid. And, and essentially we earn 20% penalty so again, it works like Florida and like Illinois. If I buy it on a Tuesday and it redeems on a Wednesday for $100,000, they owe me $120,000. Uh, so that's how the process works there. Um, it doesn't increase, it doesn't decrease. It's 20% for the first year. Uh, so it's obviously a very attractive state uh, for, for investing in tax reserves real estate and will remain that way. Some of you may have heard about Texas. They have similar laws, a little more aggressive. What's wrong with Texas? They are the number one state that the weekend warriors and workshops pitch as being so great and so successful. Um, I literally, when I started, got into this business, I would go to Houston, uh, Harris County, Texas, and they literally would have, it was like attending eight sales at once because they're precincts. Uh, when I would go, there'd be 150 people there. Of that 150, maybe 25 were serious bidders. If you go to a, a Houston sale today, you're going to see at least 1,500 people. Uh, and none of, most of them, other than that last 150, are going to know what they're doing. So Texas is just out of control. Uh, you're not going to make any, any money in Texas. Um, so anyhow, if we broke that down, uh, you know, the minimum bid, bid on the original tax amount with penalties and fees, not over the minimum bid, it's called premium bid, which as I mentioned, um, and both the minimum bid and the premium bid earn the full penalty amount. Again, other states are different. You can bid up, but it, that, that amount doesn't earn any any interest. So, you know, there's a fifty-five thousand. I saw I bought this property for sixty thousand. So I'm I've got forty thousand dollar equity if I take title to it, right? So, if the original owner just decides to let it go, they can actually collect what I bid over the original tax amount. Uh, so essentially they can they can then go back and collect the 55,000 I bid over. So in this example, if I pay 60,000 for it, uh, times 20%, that's 12,000. I got $72,000 uh, know, for them to redeem it. So they got to come up with the original tax amount plus the penalty plus what I paid for it. Uh, so that's that's seventy two thousand dollars on this hundred thousand dollar investment. So now we're going to look at some real examples from last month. Um, OK, so in the red box here, we have the address twenty two fourteen Hanson Street. Uh, the starting bid, as you can see, there was thirty seven ninety eight seventy. That's three thousand seven ninety eight seventy. 
and it sold for $58,000. So whoever owns that property now has to come up with a 20% penalty on top of that $58,000. And what's that property look like today? This is the, the property that I took off Zillow. Um, Zillow's estimate thinks it's worth about $148,000. I'd say it's probably worth about $120,000 uh, because if they're not paying the taxes, they're not doing any improvements to the property, uh, and you're going to have to get in there and, and essentially you know, make the repairs that are necessary. All right, let's look at another one. Um, 14 Herald Drive. This is in Garden City. Uh, 21,5707 is what was paid for it. $22,500 is what was sold at the tax sale. So this homeowner or this, I guess, office suite owner is going to have to pay 20% on $22,500 on top of what we paid for it. So Georgia in that respect is, is a great state for both acquiring property as well as um, you know, redemption, you know, there, there's a way to play the game because a lot of the times, uh, you know, your property taxes are escrowed into your mortgage payments and the banks will sometimes slip up and forget to get one paid. Uh, and so if you find those, you do the tie work, you can then go and, uh, you know, bid, you can bid more, a little, a little more aggressive because you know that that's going to get paid off by the mortgage company pretty quickly. So finally, you know, we're still, we're still kind of on the cusp of everything, but um, there is a secondary market or over-the-counter liens um, that people should definitely stay away from. Secondary market isn't that bad. Uh, you know, the vetted due diligence risk assessment's already been done. Uh, it's already earning interest. It's ready to foreclose. Where is the secondary market coming from? You know, obviously the one I have in this, this slide is very old, but it's just for example purposes. So those hedge funds I told you about, so they work just like a bank. They, in order to, to borrow money, they have to keep their REO that's on their books, their foreclosures, their properties at a very balanced level. Otherwise the banks won't lend them more money. Uh, so, so they will then sell those on the secondary market uh, where you, know, you, can, you can lowball them um, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can pay retail, whatever the case may be. Uh, so there is there is some opportunity in secondary market tax liens. Um, but again, be careful. You got to make sure you're looking at the right state. Uh, over the counter, as we saw in these videos, uh, hundreds, if not thousands of tax buyers struck them off as worthless. Um, so why would you think that you're going to go buy something over the counter? Uh, the sheriff's deed sales, maybe. Um, but what do you think? Uh, you know that they didn't. Uh, you know, so so it's a very risky play to go over the counter, especially when literally in Florida, fifty thousand tax lien buyers said no, uh, and it's still sitting in the county's hands. All right. So moving on. So how about get into something that isn't so crazy, um, and that is America's hottest market, which happens to be Savannah, Georgia. Um, I've gotten called out a couple of times on uh, this particular presentation. I can't do the whole presentation, but we're going to cover uh, some decent bits and piece of, pieces of it so we can get to some questions. I showed you all those low numbers. I showed you those crazy bidders bidding 0% and 1%. By investing in this market, uh, this report came out uh, the first week of October this year. And by investing in this market you, and literally doing absolutely nothing, you're making better interest than even the Georgia tax deed sales in most cases. Uh, this is what the appreciation has been for two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, five bedrooms, just for where we are as of October 2023 versus where we were September 2022. Um, and you know the link is down there at the bottom if you want to look at the data yourself. Uh, but you know, so so four bedroom houses bought on market, you know, are up 22.5%. Now, the naysayers are going to say, well, we're in a bubble. We're about to go into World War III. Uh, everything's going to change. I have said prior to COVID for the last eight years, this market is a recession-proof market. Uh, it's not going anywhere. And there's a lot of reasons behind that that I don't have time to get into today. But, you know, again, the rents in Savannah, Georgia, 
uh, are up by as much as 42% in the last four years. That's nearly triple the state average. And that's with people really starting to look for um, rentals these days because they don't want to pay the, the high interest rates we have right now. And by the way, on that topic, uh, we have the highest rates in the last 23 years. For those of you that were investing in real estate in 2000, that market was booming, absolutely booming, while we had the exact same interest rates we have today. Um, the other stat shows that 52% of housing in Savannah are renters. I tend to think that number's probably a little higher um, for uh, because you know people just aren't aren't buying right now in a lot of in a lot of areas. So Savannah, why are we getting these great numbers? It's all about our infrastructure. It started with Savannah College of Art and Design, and essentially they're following exactly what what SCAD or what Charleston did during the last recession. They're buying up all the dilapidated properties in town, the commercial properties. And investors like us are coming in and buying up all the residential properties. So it's essentially, it's an internal boom of uh, urban revitalization. Uh, and it's happening so fast that, you know, people are just clamoring to get on de good deals. Um, and uh, just as uh, just as we are. We've also got the busiest port in the country. Uh, it is expanding to be the largest port in the country. And when you think about places like New York and Long Beach, um, that's that's pretty substantial that we're moving more containers than any of those other areas. We've got Gulfstream. Uh, I've watched Gulfstream since 2004, quadruple in size, uh, and they're now getting ready to build their fifth plant uh, for manufacturing. We've got JCB. I think they're about to be really busy. They supply most of the American and Israeli military with their bulldozers and their earth movers and, and everything else. Uh, they do regular commercial companies as well, uh, but that's in Savannah too. We've got Amazon. Uh, Amazon obviously is fantastic. They they announced in 2020 that they were coming. They were supposed to open in 2022, but they actually just got open uh, a little over a month ago. Uh, so that's uh, you know the story of our lives. Unfortunately, in this booming market, is you have a shortage of labor uh, to to get the jobs done. We have two military bases. Uh, Investor 101, you always want to be investing in an area that has uh, military. Uh, so we have we have two. Uh, we got Hyundai coming. Uh, they announced last year a 5.54 billion dollar investment into the, their electric vehicle factory. That's 8,000 new jobs surging into the market in the next two years with zero housing available. Uh, literally, where this plant is, there's zero housing available, um, and we're working on other projects over there for that as well. We're also the number four best city to visit in the U.S. for the last 12 years. Um, why? Great wedding venues, um, great stuff for kids. You know, where where I live, Hilton Head Island, uh, it's been named the best island destination in the U.S. Uh, for the last seven years. Uh, so just a lot, a lot going on. And by the way, on that port expansion, I forgot to mention, uh, they're actually going to raise the bridge so we can get bigger ships in and cruise ships as well. What do you think is going to happen to our tourism when we have an influx of 5,000 tourists every Saturday dropping into to Savannah, Georgia? Our economy is just going to boom uh, and the demand for the area is just going to continue to increase. This is a great one. I'm sure none of you would have ever believed it, but Savannah is the new Hollywood, essentially. Georgia's film industry ranks number one globally uh, in the production of top grossing fi films. Uh, so not just the little, the little side hustle mom and pop Netflix films, but, uh, you know, the, the, the top grossing films. Um, you know, so that's, that's here in Savannah now. And SCAD has a lot to do with that. When you look at that, you know, California, Hollywood is already behind the UK and Canada, which is interesting. Um, you know, I think probably Louisiana and New York, um, Probably more, I would think there are more TV shows than movies, but nonetheless, uh, Savannah is the number one um, producer of top grossing feature films. So this is a fractional partnership we're offering, and you can do this through your self-directed IRA, uh, and, and it's a great investment opportunity. We're getting ready. We've had this on our books for two years, uh, and that's why when I show you the returns, uh, you have to take into account that first slide I showed you where Five bedroom houses and more are up 27% just this year. Uh, so this thing has been appreciating with us for two and a half years while we've been getting through all the historical 
uh, permitting and approvals and everything else. Um, so just keep that in mind for me as I show you some of these returns. Location, location, location. This is in uh, Forsyth Park. Uh, if you Google Savannah, Georgia, the first thing that's gonna pop up is the big giant fountain we have that we turned green for St. Patty's Day. Well, that's here, that's at this park. Uh, literally out the front door is our uh, tourist, our free tourist shuttle. Uh, so it's, it's location, location, location for sure. This was a jazz festival that went on about a month ago. Um, and as you can see, it was a pretty popular place. Uh, down on the right there, you see the arrow pointing to where this house happens to be located. Um, so great location. I'm going to have to speed up to get to some questions here real quick. But uh, so I'll, I'll end it with this particular property. But I do have another one that is a buy and hold as a cash flow opportunity. Another view of it to the left there, that's the Mansion Hotel, which is now going to be the Bardo. Uh, they just expanded and, uh, you know, the parking lots, uh, they, they ate up most of their parking lots. Parking in Savannah is a big deal here. Uh, and they're actually renting spaces from us right now. So uh, if we sell this for $7.5 million, which I think we'll actually sell it for more than that, uh, the gross profit on it is going to be 2.9 or a 65.65% return. Now, again, I'm going back to uh, the 27% in increased value appreciation, I'm sorry, just in 2023. Well, keep in mind, we had appreciation in 22, 21, and a little bit part of, of 20 uh, while we've been pushing this thing along. So considering the two years prior actually outperformed better, than 2023 with everything going on, and we still got a 27% appreciation in 2023, that makes the 65.65% number look like reality. Uh, it, it's, it's a great number, uh, but you know it's, it's a very conservative number as far as I'm concerned. It's actually less than what the market averages have been doing for us for the last three years. And that's, that's after we finish it. So I'm not going to get into this slide, but essentially how it works with us is, is you know, we can partner with multiple partners. This is a, a joint venture type of situation. Um, but when we look at the numbers and at that at that scale at seven point five million as a sale, you know, if you invested one hundred thousand dollars, which is essentially what an average investor with a self-directed IRA would invest, that's only a two point two percent ownership. No big deal. Um, but look at the profits that you make. You're making $65,000 on a $100,000 investment. And we're hoping to have this ready by May 2024. We're actually hoping to have it ready by March 2024. But, uh, you know, I'm thinking it's going to be closer to May. Um, so how that breaks down is, you know, if we sell it for 7.5, that's 65.65% return. If I, if we fire sell it, you know, for, for you know, a million less, that's still a 43% return. If I completely screwed up and my numbers don't match any of the data or anything else we've done in Savannah to date with the 30 million we've done in the last 24 months and I just completely screwed up and we have to just dump this thing, it's still a 21% return. So how's it collateralized? You own it, it's a joint venture. You know, You own your percentage of ownership based on your investment amount. And ownership is recorded. Uh, as you've got a joint venture agreement tying you to it. So you've got you've got equity in the investment. Now, this is just a quick video. We don't really have time for this, but just give you the proximity of the park uh, and the location. But it's an absolutely spectacular building. Uh, and uh, we're very, very excited to finally be able to get going on it. Now, the one next door we bought as well, we literally put an offer in it on it. We lowballed offer um, 700 less, 700,000 less than they wanted for it. Um, and this was just, you know, we say in the industry is not how you sell, it's how you buy. It's not the finishes you make, it's how you buy. Uh, this one, we literally, we stole it. Um, the day we closed on the big one, we paid 2.1 million for the big one. We made them an offer for 1.7 and they jumped all over it. So they took it. Uh, and this one I'm actually a little more excited about. Uh, and, you know, I can't get into all the details on this one, but essentially uh, the, the investment on this one, because I want as many people to get the buzz in this as I can basically find uh, to, to, to invest in this because it is going to be such an incredible return. This is a buy and hold 
uh, and is going to be a long-term buy and hold. Has part to do with that hotel next door and the appreciation we're going to ride from that hotel. But a lot of, a lot of other factors that that uh, if you reach out to me, um, I, I will be happy to share personally. If you don't want to be part of the investment, you can lend us the capital. Hard money is expensive right now, but not only is it expensive, they don't lend to short-term vacation rentals like this one's going to be. Uh, so even if we wanted to use hard money, we can't on this project. I say 24,000 gross revenues every month. This is eight units, 16 beds. Uh, but I actually think it's going to be considerably more than that. Um, you know, just for the building alone, the after repair value is $5.7 million. Um, so if you do the math there, this is about a 96% return. And again, why? Because for the last two and a half years, we've just been riding on the appreciation. It's not a bubble here. We're not going to deal with a bubble here. Uh, so it's this, th these numbers to me are very conservative, pretty low numbers. But we do have 24 parking spots that are going with it as well. And those 24 parking spots are worth $2 million by themselves. So even though I'm saying it's $5.75 million after repair value, you got to include the parking lot too. So, you know, your 96% is actually a lot higher than that. But it's hard for me to convince you of that without giving you the data that I've given you. So again, 16 beds, eight baths at $3,000 a month, plus the parking, that's $547,200 a year in gross revenues on a $2.9 million investment. That's an 18.69% uh, gross cap rate. Savannah's pre-COVID appreciation for the seven years prior to COVID was consistently 12% a year. So if I take out the bubble, uh, I take out the ARV, uh, and you know, I take out you know the these these high numbers. If you just rode the yearly revenues plus the pre-COVID appreciation per year, that would give you ninety-three point four five percent in gross revenues over five years, with a value appreciation of sixty percent in the property itself. Um, there's no way to dispute those numbers. Absolutely no way. How is there no way? Because we're going to get more than three thousand dollars a month. Uh, in revenues per unit. This one is 11 beds, nine baths. Remember, I just said ours is 16 beds, eight baths. Ours are apartments. They have a full kitchen. They have a separate bedroom and living room. We have four that are overlooking the park. This one does not. We saw the, uh, the profit loss statement on this project, uh, and they did 560000 in gross revenues uh, year to date, uh, and they don't have any off-street parking. That's huge here. Uh, so we have 24 spots of our off-street parking. Needs about 500K just to preserve it, another 500K to renovate it, and it's on the wrong side of the tracks. Um, so with that, I've got more to share, but we need to stop and take some questions. Uh, so I'm going to stop here, uh, and and you know we'll hand it back over to you, Will, and I'll just kind of flip through the, the rest of the slides while uh, while we answer the questions. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for the information so far. We do have two questions that came in over um the presentation you may have touched on them but just to just to get them out of the way while people are um typing their questions and now one question is when investing in this fund do you get upside when the real estate is acquired uh when it's acquired um so i think mean, so it's uh, everything everything we do is performance driven so everything we do is on the back side uh, you know, so, so, you know, I don't, I don't know about upside on the front side. I mean, yes, essentially you do because we're selling you these investments at the pre COVID, uh, prices. Um, so the way we've calculated it is since, since, uh, we bought the properties, these properties have appreciated by 34%, which is pretty low. Um, sorry so, to cut you off. He just, yep. um, he just clarified that. That question was in reference to the tax liens. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, yeah, you get nothing, nothing on the front end at the acquisition. Nothing. Okay. Thank you for that. And then um I'm I believe this one is in um reference to what you're you've been talking about, the the deals you were talking about recently. Does the investment provide a monthly return or only at the exit? Uh, so the buy and hold, um, the one that was on the left, that is uh, going to be quarterly because uh, just like I said, it's going to be a lot of volume JV type people. Uh, the one on the right, that is on exit. Um, but we're we're planning to list it for sale as soon as we have the renderings. 
All right. Great. Thanks for the questions, Ben. Does anybody else have any questions for Charles while we have him live with us now? I mean, use the time now. Um, also, Charles, I'm not sure if you, you listed your, your contact information yet, just for people that are they're curious. Oh, you're right. The recording or after the fact. I forgot to put that slide in. All right. So it's my first name, Charles, at strategicallyinvest.com. Charles at strategicallyinvest.com. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Looking for any questions. Here we go. Here's another one. This one is, is also regarding tax liens. So you acquire the deeds to the property and then we get paid back and strategic then holds that real estate? Uh, no, no, no. If you acquire the lien to the property, you own it. It's your property. Um, uh, you know, essentially what we'll do is we'll assist, uh, we'll assist in the repairs and the renovations and, and uh, reconfigure the, essentially what we get again, what we get is we get paid based on performance. So once we, um, uh, uh offload the property, we would get a percentage of the net profits of the sale. We don't get anything on the redemption though. It's just if you take it, if you're successful in the foreclosure. Okay. Are the are the tax liens paid back quarterly? No, you own them. So they're paid back whenever whenever the investor, whenever the investor, I'm sorry, whenever the homeowner redeems the taxes. Okay, great. Thank you for the questions and the answers. A any other questions from anybody in the audience? We do have we do have um, Charles' contact information in the oh it actually looks like it was sent to just the panelists. Um, uh -huh. We can switch that real quick. We'll put that contact information in there for everybody. One second. There we go. Um, all right. Well, it looks like all of the questions have been answered um, by the audience. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, we have a question from Michael. What is your role in the in the investment for the tax liens? So everything we do is to create is to want to use our resources and knowledge to make um uh you know, to mitigate your risks. Uh, but two, it's it's to essentially make you successful in the investment. So our role is we do all the due diligence if we're going into a tax deed sale in Georgia. We do all the due diligence ahead of time. We attend the auction. Uh, we ha handle filing any notices or, or legal requirements that are that are needed. Uh, and then, um, you know, we, we more or less handhold you through the whole process. When we get a notice of redemption in the state of Georgia, even though that lien does act like a deed, uh, in the same sense, we actually have to quit claim that lien deed back to the homeowner. Um, so that that we handle all of that as well. And then the funds go back to you. So where we make our money is on the ones that do not um, get redeemed. Uh, and, and like I said, I said before, there's a strategy where we can just buy liens with mortgages. Now we do get paid on that one. Um, so we, we will, we charge 2% once it's redeemed on that one. Uh, but if it goes through to foreclosure and then we get into doing repairs, we handle all the repairs, we get it listed for sale, and then we get a performance bonus on the back side of it. So that's how we get paid. And Yes, we have a list of available liens for the auctions that we're going to on Tuesday. Great. So thank you for the questions there again. Um, and it looks like we're, we're almost at perfect time here. So um, if anybody has any questions for Charles watching this recording or after the fact, well, who, who are in the presentation today and, and think of a question or are watching the recording after the fact, um, the contact information is there. Um, Charles, do you have anything you want to close off on? Nope, that's it. That's it. Um, hopefully, you guys, give us a call. And uh, if you got more questions, by all means, you know I kind of whipped through that to try to get through most of those slides. Uh, I'm happy to to you know do a personal presentation with you as well. All right, thank you, thank you to Charles for his time. Thank you to everybody who attended, and thank you to anybody who's watching this recording after the fact. I hope you all have a great rest of your day.
Thanks, Bob.